do smoke a lot of pot. When I'm high, I can't decide that my thoughts are brilliant or the dumbest ideas ever. I'm like, you think girls with diabetes have sugar daddies? <laughs> if you ghost a girl in a wheelchair, does that mean you stood her up? <laughs> yes, these are the jokes, people, okay? When I was a kid, they had the dumbest drug commercials. They'd be like, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? I'm like, yeah, I'm 15, they're in my sock. <laughs> Thank you, because you masturbate and then grab a sock to fucking wipe it up. I appreciate that. I love it when hot girls are stoned, just not in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Some of you are laughing. This guy's like, what the fuck's going on right now? I feel like it's, Mac Miller came back to life and they got him off Wish, and here he is. <laughs> How are you? This two beautiful, beautiful black couple. How you guys doing? You guys banging? No, no, all right, well, pay half. Okay, that's the, <laughs> fuck it, if I'm going down, we're all going down, okay? Me, you, how is it going? This guy's wearing a sweatshirt and shorts. You're like one of those dogs you see that has a sweater, but his balls are fucking hanging out. Yes, I'm bringing this whole fucking room with me, okay? I don't care. I like you three guys. Where'd you guys all meet? Lens crafters? No. It's the fucking no pussy posse hanging out tonight. But being a dad, which is, uh, which is fun. You know, my, my, my kid, I, I coach wrestling for little kids. And what I learned is that when, a, when someone, a kid falls down, you don't react. Because if you react, they're going to see that you're upset, then they're going to start crying, right? And then, so my daughter, whenever she falls down, I just don't react. So I don't want to, right? But sometimes the other day, she fell down, and I started clapping. You know, and I'm like, great, now she'll be the next member of Jackass. <laughs> Which is cool. I do like being a dad. My daughter asked me questions I can't answer. She's like, Daddy, do you pee standing up or sitting down? And I was like, I pee standing up. And she's like, why? And I'm like, because I'm not a vegan. <laughs> and she goes, can boys get pregnant? I'm like, no, unless you watch CNN. <laughs> yes. Then she goes, how to get mom's belly. I told her the truth. I was like, alcohol. I like to do tasks on weed too, man. I like to do tasks on weed. I like to do a task on weed, like make an omelet. You ever make an omelet on weed? All of a sudden, you're on the fucking cooking channel, aren't you? You got your shit all diced up, different dishes. You're talking to that imaginary cameraman. <laughs> That's when you realize what a quitter you are, man. When you're making an omelet on weed. Because what's the whole point of making an omelet, anyway? To keep it fucking omelety, right? You try not to fuck it up. The flames sound like that high. You're like, I'm gonna keep this all fucking omelette. You make one mistake, you're like, fuck it. These are gonna be cool scrambled eggs now. <laughs> What's the fucking difference, man? My wife and kids are out of town. Yeah, nah, it wasn't that great, man. Everybody's like, yeah, that's cool, they're out of town. It's not cool, man. I was home alone with one thing, my fucking thoughts. <laughs> Why do your thoughts never say encouraging shit to you, man? My thoughts are never like, hey, bro, you should take up woodworking. Why don't you buy a lathe or some shit? Nah, my fucking thoughts want to rehash the 80s, you know? Every dumb fucking thing I've said since middle school. Shut the fuck up, thoughts. <laughs> I was in Venice Beach a week ago, and there's like this uh, homeless dude... How come every homeless dude down there is arguing with their imaginary friend that they can't get along with? They're all arguing. Don't tell me to get a credit check. I don't need a fucking credit check. Why don't you get a fucking credit check? Shit, man. I don't have an imaginary friend, but if I did, we would be getting along all the time. You know what I'm saying? My imaginary friend would be like, you look way better with a lot less hair, Peter. Thank you, imaginary friend. You're the best. How, how old are you? 20, see, I have a 24-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what she taught me? I feel a little awkward saying it, but like, okay, let me give you an example. Like, um, hey, bro, hey, you on your um, cellular device, that cellular device is fire. <laughs> fire? That's what you say, right? Fire, you say it. Shit, bro, that shit is fire. Like, cause me, like, to me, fire is fire, right? It's already, a, it's a noun, it's fire. Like, that light is fire. No, 
that light is a light. You know what I mean? You could say that light's hot or that light's cool, but fire. Then I don't know if she was fucking with me or not, but she said the next new one is power. You heard that one? I go, bitch, because I always call my daughter bitch. I go, I go, I go listen, I'm, I'm a white guy in my 40s. I ain't walking around going power, okay? That just ain't happening. Hey, dog, that, that hat is power. <laughs> Holy shit. That, power. That, power. Like, I'm going to be at the Gap. Like, damn, dude, I love that shirt. That is power. You know, I, I could get in trouble for that in this day and age of, you know. Let's say I'm looking at a white T-shirt in the Gap. And he goes, like, what about the white one? And I go, white power! That shit is the bunk! <laughs> see, it's making you uncomfortable, just me doing it as a joke. I could see it, like, a, I could hear the assholes, like... Uh, I'm uh, uncle, duh, right? This is what an uncle looks like. <laughs> or a father of five, I don't know. I have an older sister. She married a Peruvian Indian. She is Indian Persian. They just had a baby boy. He came out medium spicy. <laughs> if you've never been to an Indian wedding, wear comfortable shoes. They're five days long. And if you need to know how to dance at an Indian wedding, there's three moves. I'm gonna teach it to you all right now. First one, did you guys hear that? Firework. <laughs> My brothers, did they start? but so early. <laughs> All right, three moves. Uh, first move is with your shoulders, and it looks like this. It's like, are you hungry? And then you pretend there's another person, and they say, I guess I'm hungry. And then it goes back to you, and you're like, let's go see the buffet. That's the first move. Everybody try it. Give me one. Just give me one. Boom, you got it, perfect. Second move is the head nod, and it looks like this. It's uh, beautiful people over there. Oh, beautiful people over there. And then the last one's very pandemic friendly. It's, are my hands clean? My hands are clean. Are my hands clean? My hands are clean. And then you just combine it, and then boom, you're Indian. That's it, right there. I grew up as a beautiful gay porcelain gay prince in the small town. And one of the worst things that ever happened to me was when my dad, Papa, when I was 18 years old, my dad found gay porn on my computer. It was horrible! It's one of the worst moments of my entire life. I'd just gotten off work at Chicken Express. And I walked into my bedroom, and my dad was sitting at my computer and he pulled up a picture. And this was in the days of dial-up internet. So there's just a slowly loading picture of a naked fireman on my computer. I don't know if anybody else came to terms with their sexuality when 9-11 happened, but a bit of a tap dance. Anyway, I wa my dad found this gay porn on my computer. And as the picture was loading, you see the ankles at first. It goes this way, and you're like, maybe this isn't that bad. And then the picture keeps loading, and you're like, well, uh-oh. Uh, that is a rock hard erection, and it seems that his friend is holding it, actually, uh, with his mouth. So, <laughs> bit of a pickle, pun intended. And I didn't know what to do. I kind of walked into my bedroom, and ironically, I turned into my closet, and... Then I turned and I looked at my dad, and from a well of courage, I said, Dad, we're going to have to talk about this, and it's probably going to be a bit difficult, but I'm going to be brave, and I'd like you to be brave, and let's see if we can get through this together. So I looked at my dad, square in the eyes, and I said, Dad, I am almost certain the grandma has been coming in here during the afternoons and using this computer, and I don't know what she's into, but looks like grandma has a thing for firemen, and <laughs> seems she may have also bought your credit card uh, and bought season one of Will and Grace on TVT, and that's the story of how grandma got sent to the nursing home, so prayers are welcome for her. 
The, uh, the Chinese food restaurants in my, in my neighborhood are very cocky, man. Very confident. Too much so. One of them is called Famous Number One Food. Have you heard of it? That's weird. It's pretty famous. <laughs> and apparently, it's number one in the world. It's number one. Only five seats and no door. But somehow, it's number one. <laughs> famous number one. They think they're the shit, obviously. But the one across the street thinks they're even better than famous number one. The one across the street is called Forever Best Time. <laughs> which doesn't even sound like a Chinese food restaurant, man. Like, let's be real. You're like, that's a happy ending place. Or an amusement park. I would think it's an amusement park. It sounds like an amusement park. I called them up. I was like, hey, uh, what kind of rides do you have over at your amusement park? They're like, oh, we got fried rides, sh shrimp fried rides. <laughs> That's stupid, but I, I knew you'd like it because you're all high as fuck, so. <laughs> these, these, who's naming these Chinese food restaurants? It's crazy. DJ Khaled? <laughs> it's the best nutrition! <laughs> I think DJ Khaled is naming these Chinese food restaurants, man. This is, a, this is a cool way, though. It might be a better business tactic to name your business this. You know, you take, like, Two words that mean awesome, and then you put what you do after it. Maybe this is working. I don't know. Maybe other businesses should try this. Imagine, like, oh, dude, you're injured? You should go to Lucky Number One Hospital, bro. <laughs> they fix you long time over there. They heal you long time. That's the racist part of the joke that I just did. The call my girl one time. She's like, your place needs a woman's touch. I'm like, so does my penis. <laughs> Why do girls always want to kiss us after giving us a blowjob? What's up with that, ladies, huh? I turn into the Matrix. I'm like, whoa, fucking. This is not what I paid for. I had a girl ask me, could your penis do tricks? I mean, I put it in your mouth, it'll explode. <laughs> Don't write down a list of all the girls you bang. Pretend you fucked the girl, Steve. Okay, but. So... <laughs> my wife found my list. She's like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, list your future baby names. She's like, really? Chubby girl in Cancun? <laughs> Who the fuck is Carl?